And we're back with more after class. As promised, so we're on last day four. That's really all I have to say as an intro. Let's get right to it. The alarm you set last night just went off. Mm -hmm. You moved your hand around trying to find your phone. After a few seconds you finally got the phone. Still half awake you opened your eyes, turning off the alarm. You looked at the time. It was still early. <sighs> still early, like I expected. And I should wake up. I don't want to oversleep. It's like that post I read the other day. The most dangerous game is resting your eyes after you turn off the alarm clock in the morning. You got up and stretched your body, then headed to the bathroom to shower. You took a warm shower, brushed your teeth and did whatever you need to do. When you're done, you headed to your room to get dressed. Since it was still early, you decided to eat breakfast. There's nothing too exciting inside the fridge. You grabbed whatever you could eat and made breakfast on those ingredients. After you ate breakfast, you grabbed your bag and headed to the school. I wonder if Lars is here. It's still early anyway, so I won't be late to class. Curious, you headed to the campsite. You saw Lars cleaning himself near the river. You wanted to go there, but you didn't want to make it awkward. Not after yesterday's accident. He left the tent open, though. You wonder if it's okay to go inside the tent or not. I want to go inside. I'm curious about what he brings with him. Your eyes kept looking at this tent. I suppose not. He said I can go here whenever I want, not to enter the tent whenever I want. I guess I'll just wait here until he's finished cleaning up. Lars walked toward the tent. As he walked toward it, your eyes met with his. Not sure what to do, you hid near the bushes. Why am I hiding? He stood there for a bit, saying nothing. He saw his ears twitch and then he turned his back, staring at the bushes. Uh, well, I'm not sure why you're hiding. Our eyes literally met earlier. Embarrassed, you walked out of the bush. <laughs> and me neither. I, I just felt like I invaded your privacy. Okay. He entered the tent to put his dirty clothes away. He walked out wearing his new clothes. Which has the same pattern as his usual clothes. He peeked inside. It seemed like they had the same pair of clothes. Hmm? He snapped his fingers in front of your eyes. Well done looking around. Oh, no, no, that's not it. What are you doing here? Well, I didn't expect you to come here that fast. I'm just passing by. I thought it was still early, so I figured I'd stop by and say hi. Hmm, okay. Say, did you sleep well? Oh, I did. That's good. Ah, I don't know what to talk about. Well, how about you? Yes. Well, did you sleep well? well I had a weird dream, but I did. Oh, uh, mind telling me? Yeah, it was about... You were going to tell him, but you forgot what your dream was. Ah, I forgot. Ah, that's too bad. Oh, another time then. You sat there for a bit and chatted with Lars. Uh, I should get going now. Already? Yeah, I have classes today. Hmm, okay. I'll come back later if you don't mind. Uh, about that. I won't be here later, I'll be in the park. Oh, okay, then I'll stop by later if you don't mind. Alright. Well, see you later. Walk safe. Will do. You left Lars camp and headed the school. Let's see. Thursday's Mr. Parker's class. To his class I go then. As you walked into the classroom, you saw Mr. Parker sitting on his chair looking at the paper in his hand. He noticed you walked in, so he put the paper on his desk. Oh, good morning, Bruno. Good morning, Mr. Parker. Well, how are you feeling today? I feel fine. How about you? Well, that's good, and I'm all right. Uh, what do you do when you seem uh, troubled? Uh, just the usual teacher stuff, no worries. Well, being a teacher can be stressful, you know. Oh, I wouldn't know. Well, anyway, would you like to go to the cafeteria with me later? Well, I skipped breakfast, and well, I'd enjoy the company. Uh, I'll think about it. Oh, good. I'll be waiting in the cafeteria after school. Oh, don't worry if you can't make it. Okay. Uh, I've got to answer this phone. Excuse me for a bit. 
Well, it's okay, I'll go sit down. With Mr. Parker answering the phone call, you headed your seat and waited for class to start. You sat down, put your bag down and played with your phone. Soon after, Mark came into the classroom and sat next to you. Yo! Huh, Mark? Well, that's me. You're not late today, huh? That's good. I get in. You come to class today, that's good. He put on an innocent face as if he didn't understand what you said to him. Oh, what do you mean? I heard nothing. You went back to the phone, trying not to give him any more attention. So, how did it go? Wh what? You kept playing with him on your phone. Oh, don't play dumb. Come on, tell me. But I don't know what you mean. Oh, t Mr. Stone. I was talking about him. Uh, Mr. Stone? Who? Mr. Parker. Now you can't focus because of what he said. What do you mean? I saw you talking with him earlier and I overheard him asking you for a date. No, that's not a date. He only asked me to go with him. Oh, sure, my buddy. But I wonder if he'll go. Why did you say that? Oh, no reason. <laughs> right, on the way to school I saw someone wearing a blue... Uh, what's it called again? A tank top? Yes, what about someone wearing a blue tank top? I remember seeing you talking to him on the first day at school. Ah, yeah, that was scary. I accidentally bumped into him. I thought he'd kill me right there. Turns out he's a gentle person. Well, sometimes. Oh, yes, anyway, I was curious about him, so I went to his place. Uh, at least I thought that was his house. Turns out he's homeless. Really? He told me he just camped there. Then again, I was wondering about that too. I didn't want to assume anything. No one camps in the middle. No, behind someone's private property, Bruno. Well, I don't know if you're just dumb or... Yeah, I don't know. You're just too naive. I guess you're right. I'm always right. You know, I saw something a tad interesting in his tent. What is it? It's... Ah, I'm going to the restroom. Had coffee and donuts. Nature is calling. He stood up and exited the classroom in a rush. Wait, tell me. You can't leave me hanging like that. I'll die curious if you do that. Ah... <sighs> Mark went back from the restroom right before the class started. He rushed to a seat before Mr. Parker started the session. Ah, better. Please tell me what you meant earlier. Ah, you came back before we started the session, Mr. Thornton. Well, that's good. Thornton? That sounds familiar. I'm a good student, Mr. Stone. What do you mean? Nice guy. Also in class right now, Bruno. Pay attention. He opened his book and started listening to the lecture. Fine. You listen to Mr. Parker's lecture on prose poem. Mr. Barker ended the session. Before he left the room, he smiled at you. When he left the room, Mark got up and stretched his upper body. Mm. So, are you going to a cafeteria date with Mr. Parker? Or maybe I'll go to another date. I'll decide later. I'm still mad. Either way, I'll be in the playground. Hit me up if you want to play with me to play with you. Catch you later. You walked away before you could say anything. It seemed to do that often, you said to yourself. You walked out to the classroom, headed to the hallway. I'm feeling hungry. Should I stop by the cafeteria? Hmm. Yeah, I think I should. When you were on the way to the cafeteria, you rand randomly remembered about Lars. Oh, now I see what he meant by that. Damn it, Mark. You checked your phone to see the time. It seemed like you can only visit one of them at a time. But I don't know where the park is. You open the map on your phone looking for the location to the park. I might as well look for the playground when I'm at it. Didn't take too long to find those places. Not what you're expecting, actually. Ah, now I have to decide where do I want to go. Mm. Decisions, decisions. That's useful information if you're playing the game. I've been through this a few times, so I kind of know what's going on. So this is where the school is. Mr. Park in the cafeteria. We go to Park, see Lars. Playground, see Mark. Head home. It's fairly obvious what we're going to do with this playthrough. <laughs> and honestly, who wouldn't want to go to the park with Lars? I already told Lars I'll see him later. It'd be rude if I don't show up. You decided to go to the park. You strolled around the park looking for Lars. 
There are lots of people around here. Kids playing on the ground, couples walking hand in hand, and even singles. For example, you. After walking for a while, you saw Lars sitting beneath the tree, staying cool in the shade. He looked rugged, probably just finished doing some volunteer work. His eyes were closed, he was breathing slowly, looking relaxed. Some leaves fell onto his clothes. You couldn't help but think he kind of looked like a stray cat. He always looks so tired every time I see him. You approached him and called his name. Hello, Lars. He didn't hear it, so he called his name louder. Hey, Lars. Hmm? Oh, I'm up. Hmm. Uh, it's you. What are you doing here? I told you I'd come to the park, didn't I? Oh, uh, yeah, you did. My turn to ask, what are you doing here? Me? Oh, I was just doing some volunteer work. We finished, so I was taking a break, stayed in the shade, trying to overheat. Yeah, I know it's not even summer. Or it's too hot after cleaning almost the whole park. I see, I certainly understand you on that part. What kind of volunteer work did you do? Well, cleaning the park, picking up trash, plastic, leaves and such. Ah, you did great. The park is really clean. Huh, <laughs> thanks. Why are you doing volunteer work anyway? Why? Right. Suddenly his ears dropped. He frowned and didn't say anything after that. He felt bad for asking that. You don't have to answer if you don't want to. Okay. Oh, how was school? It was alright. I had English today and headed out as soon as it ended. An English class, huh? Yep. Uh, who's your English professor? Mr. Pa... Uh, I mean, Mr. Stone. Do you know him? Uh, I'm just curious, that's all. Anyway, do you want to come over later? Oh, to your place. Oh, yes. Sure thing, I kind of like that place. <laughs> well, that's good to know. Oh, yeah, there's some... He stopped halfway when he saw someone walking toward both of you. Uh, give me a moment, okay? Uh, take your time. He approached that old man and you heard them talking in the distance. It wasn't exactly clear, but you could still hear their conversation just fine. Yeah, we well, just finished cleaning and everyone has already left. When I was tired, so I stayed in the park to rest up for a bit. Oh, I see. Thank you for your hard work, Lars. Uh, here's your payment for today. Uh, you don't have to do that, really. Well, it's volunteer work. I did that because I wanted to. Yeah, the same goes for me. Oh, really? That's fine. Oh, just take it, Lars. You're part of Iowa. We can't just ignore you. Well, I said it's fine. We can't just ignore him. What does that mean? The old man kept insisting Lars accepted the money. Eventually, Lars agreed to take it. Hmm. <laughs> Well, if you insist, well, thank you very much. Good, and it's no problem. I'm here to tell you something, too. What is it? Decided not to listen anymore. You walked near the tree, sat down and played on your phone. The old man's still talking with Lars. He looked at Lars. For some reason, he seemed really down. I wonder what's happening over there. He doesn't look too good. You kept playing on your phone and tried not to pry for now. Ask him when the time's right. I don't want to make the situation worse. For now, let's play this new vo vocal droid game until he's finished talking. Ha! Ah, I can't understand the interface. It's all on Chinese. Oh, what to do? I'm confusion. You kept complaining, but you still played the whole game. You looked at Lars still talking with the old man. They sure were taking their time. I'll just keep playing this game. So you started the song you wanted to play. Lars walked toward you. He sat down, then looked at you meekly without saying anything. What happened? He hugged you suddenly. Your phone fell out of your hands. Ah, my phone! But what's up with him? That's something he certainly wouldn't do. You were going to pat his back, but he got back up. Oh, sorry about that. Ah, it's no problem. What will happen if you don't mind telling me? Well, I'd rather not talk about it right now. I'm going back. Do you still want to come with me? Yeah, let's go with him. Yeah, let's go, but where are we going? Well, to my place, of course. And you're going to help me clean up my stuff. What? Why? <laughs> Don't ask why, it's too late to back up now. He patted your head and he got up, walking to the distance. It seemed like his mood was getting better. I'm glad he's feeling better now. At least I'd like to believe so. You grabbed your phone, got up and ran after him before he walked too far. Wait for me. 
Welcome to my den. Hey, cozy den. Oh, I know, but we gotta clean this place up. So, it looks like the same. What are we cleaning? Everything. I'm leaving this place. Why are you leaving? Where are you going? Hmm. You don't have to tell me, and I won't force you. But I'm willing to listen if you need to rant. Alright. Wait, why are we cleaning this place if you're supposed to leave? Well, there's no way I'm leaving my items behind. You went inside the tent to put everything outside. Sleeping bags, water bottles, dirty clothes and whatsoever. Well, fair point. You got out of the tent and started undoing the tent. How long have you been staying here? Oh, not that long. Well, less than a year. I don't remember, honestly. You sat down on the ground while Lars kept undoing the tent. I see. You looked at him. Sort of sweaty, you thought. Just looking at him made you hungry for some reason. What am I thinking? So, how about food? I, uh, sometimes go to eat at Publix. Or if I'm feeling adventurous, which is almost all the time, I went outside to forage. You know, like wild plants and flowers. There are a lot of edible food out there, if you know what you're looking at. Uh, you can eat flowers? Well, some, yeah. How about these tomatoes near here? Tomatoes? What tomatoes? I don't remember growing tomatoes here. You showed him these tomatoes growing near where you were sitting on. That looks plump and juicy. Those aren't tomatoes. Please try not to eat it. Those fruits are poisonous. They contain solanine. Oh, I wouldn't know. If I were hungry, I'd just eat them, thinking they were wild tomatoes. I, I don't know what solanine is, but I'm just going to trust him. Well, let's remember, there are no edible wild tomatoes. Well, maybe there are, but I'm no expert, so I'm just playing it safe. Huh, okay. Well, going back to work. All right. I just realised there's a thing to do. <laughs> well, you can take it easy then. Don't worry about it. You're my guest. Sit down and enjoy the view. Okay. Oh, I'm enjoying it, all right. Look at those muscles. How can I not enjoy that? You sat down on the ground again, looking around the area. You observed these tomatoes again and several wild plants around you. They're really poisonous. They look perfectly fine to me. Well, I'm not going to find out too. You can't really tell by looking at it. Hey, Lars. Oh, yes? How do you know these are poisonous? Well, I heard people talk about it. Plus, I learned in high school. High school? Biology. All right. He had finished undoing the tents, and he moved to packing his stuff. You, meanwhile, continued observing the plants. After a while, you got bored of the plants, so you turned your body and looked at him. He's really working hard, huh? I wonder if he works out. His body looks... Oh, ah, so good. Meanwhile, me, I'm just a slab of walking mess. He moved around, grabbing anything he needed. Then he noticed you were looking at him all weird like. Are you okay? Hmm? Yeah, you've been looking at me for quite a while now. Ah, nothing, just getting distracted. Alright, let's wait a moment, I'm almost done. Okay. He started folding his clothes to the bag. Even though he lived inside a tent, he kept his stuff neat and clean. He folded everything neatly, putting them in the bag carefully. Still a surprise to you that someone looking as rough as him can be really gentle. After some time he finished folding all his clothes. The only thing left was underwear. He grabbed them quickly and instead of folding it like his clothes he just shoved them in. You could see he's looking a bit embarrassed. Oh, he's just so cute. After this I'll go back to my place I guess. Oh where's your place? Well, somewhere in this town. Is he? I didn't answer my question. You... you have somewhere to stay? For some reason you saw him wince a little when he heard your question. Uh, yeah. Yeah, something is that maybe Mark's right. I'll try to ask him again. Oh, wh where is it? Why do you keep pestering me about it? I... I just want to know. I don't want to tell you. Ouch. Why did you avoid my question? Why are you lying to me? He stood there for a while, didn't say anything. Well, what do you mean? I'm sorry if it comes off as rude, but you're homeless, aren't you? Oh well, yes, I am. Is that a problem? Not at all. Why is everyone judging me because I don't have someone place to stay? Could calm down, Lars. I didn't say that. He stepped closer and raised his voice. Well, did you? Oh, I can see it on your face. You're acting all naive and shit. I'm sure you're talking behind my back. What? Well, what? No. I thought you were different, but I guess I was wrong. So what if I'm homeless? Why can't I live in peace? Why don't I give anyone trouble? I'm just like you guys. I know. 
I know you don't. You don't know shit about it at all. You're just a pampered kid. Everything goes nicely for you. Give me a break. Don't act like you know how I feel. Listen. You try to grab his hand to calm him down. He pushes your hand away in response, accidentally hurting your arm with his claws. Right. You realise he hurt your arms and he looked a bit, a little bit shocked. Listen to me. I'm sorry if I said wrong, but I didn't mean it like that. I just wanted to know. I didn't mean to offend you. I'm sorry if I did. And you said I'm a pampered kid. Everything goes nicely for me. How dare you? I act all happy-go-lucky and stuff. That doesn't mean everything goes well for me. I'm sorry if whatever happened so you had to leave. You can't just take it out on me. I don't know how you feel at all, but at least I'm trying to. Not like someone that just snapped in front of me and started talking nonsense about me. You, you idiot. You're awful. Bruno. You pushed him away, then walked away out of anger, leaving him alone. Oh, stupid Lars, I only wanted you to ask and help him. You walked away without looking at the map. Now you're wondering where you were. A playground? Where is this? Mark said he'd go to the playground. Is this the one he mentioned? How did I get here? Hmm. <sighs> I might as well sit here for a bit to collect my thoughts. You approached one of the swings and sat on it. You rocked it slowly as you collected your thoughts. I feel bad about saying those awful things to him. But he said something about me too. I just kind of lost it. He shouldn't have said that. That was insensitive of him. Maybe I should apologise to him. It was my fault to begin with. What were you apologising to? What? Someone grabbed you from behind, causing you to jump out of the swing abruptly. You lost your balance and fell down to the ground. Are you okay, buddy? Hmm? Ah! Suddenly you felt a surge of pain in your right arm. Ah, I'm sorry, I didn't know you were hurt. Let me help you get back up. Mark, you still here? Yep, I've been here since you walked here, looking down and all. I thought I'd cheer you up, but it ended up badly. He helped you get back up. You sat down on the swing again and you looked at your right arm. What happened? Wait, you are hurt. How did you get hurt? Mark looked genuinely worried. Maybe a little too worried. It's okay, it's no big deal. No big deal, it's bleeding. You didn't realise that until Mark told you. Ah, yeah. It looked like a claw, Mark, too. Who did this to you? Tell me. Oh, it's nothing important, don't mind me. I can't not mind it, this is a serious problem. Really, it's fine, it's a bit of bleeding, it'll stop. Ah, if you don't want to tell me, it's fine, but let's get your wound treated first. I don't have anything at home, so we might not go to Publix to get the items. It's f yeah, I insist. Well, if you don't want to treat it, it's fine. At least we should disinfect it first. Don't want you getting infected, capiche? You felt there's no point to argue with him. You decided to go with him. As soon as you got up, you felt a drop of water on your ear. It seemed like it was starting to rain. Yeah, that's not good. Let's rush before it starts pouring down. Okay. You headed to Bublix with Mark. Both of you rushed to Bublix, hoping you'd reach there before it rains. Thankfully you arrived before it started to rain. Oh, we made it. Yeah. Right, we should go inside and get this disinfectant. Do you want to come with me? It's raining, let's go inside. I want to go inside. Good, then come with me. You headed inside with Mark. Welcome to Publix. Hey, Anders. Hi. Bruno, are you hurt? Yeah, he is. Sorry for asking you this, but would you mind keeping him company for a bit while I'm looking for disinfectant? Hey, I can walk with you. Oh, sure thing. Uh, it's next to the bread aisle. You heard the guy. Stay here with him. I'll be right back. Okay. Mark went to get the disinfectant, leaving you here with Anders. Well, how are you feeling? I'm feeling fine. Oh, that's good. What happened? I, I'd rather not talk about it. Oh, as you wish. Oh, thank you. Oh, don't mention it. Well, I'm going to get something. Don't worry about customers. Oh, it doesn't look like anyone's coming in or out here anytime soon. Huh? Okay. You walked out of the counter and walked off somewhere else. You looked at the cash register. It's an old one. Next to it was a sketchbook, possibly Anders. You wonder about what he draws. He kept the sketchbook closed so you couldn't see what's in it. He hadn't come back. He leaned on the counter looking at the entrance. Well, a lot of people are taking shelter here. Looks like they're trying not to get wet. I wonder how Lars is doing. He doesn't have anywhere to live now, does he? Oh, it's raining too. Well, I hope he's okay. 
I want to go home to be honest, but Mark dragged me here. Speaking of Mark, he's really taking a long time to get the disinfectant. Soon after, Anders came back holding two cups with him. Well, here you go. He handed you a cup. Feels warm to the touch. You looked at it. It was a cup of warm milk. Well, I figured you wouldn't like coffee and chocolate, so I gave you milk. I hope that's okay. And don't worry about paying. It's on me. Oh, it's wonderful. Thanks, Anders. He doesn't show it that much. He's a good guy, I guess. I don't know why they're avoiding him. Maybe there's something I don't know yet. Oh, well. You sip the milk slowly. Ah, so good. Well, of course, I made that milk. Hmm? Huh? What does that mean? He looked over his chest. Judging from his shirt, you could tell his pecs are big. Well, I suppose they're big enough to produce milk, aren't they? Am I drinking his milk? Well, now that I think about it, that sounded really wrong. Oh, I didn't mean it like that. Oh, my bad. Before your mind goes somewhere else, I don't produce milk. What you're drinking right now is condensed milk. Oh, no problem. I didn't think of it like that. Mm-hmm. He put his coffee on the counter. Would you mind if I looked at your arm? Hmm, sure thing. He grabs your arm gently and applied pressure near the wound. Does it hurt? Uh, not that much. It's just a small scratch. True, but they can be painful, especially paper cuts. Oh, yeah, that. They hurt so much. I wonder why. Oh, the paper makes a shallower wound than the other cutting injuries. So why does it hurt so much? It usually doesn't bleed that much. The nerves around the cut are exposed to wear. Without a blood clot to protect them, they can hurt more. And possibly last longer, too. I see. I didn't know about that. Well, I read on the internet once. Well, I have experiences with paper cuts, too. Ark, I hear. That makes sense. <laughs> it must be tough. Oh, a little bit. So, are you guys going to talk and hold hands like that until it's closing time? Mark's back with the disinfectant. Looked like he brought some cotton buds and several items unrelated to your wound. Maybe he's, maybe he's running an errand. Who knows? Uh, apologies. I forgot about it. Hey, it's okay. I didn't realize he was still holding my hand, too. Well, I got this infectant and cotton buds, too. You have to pay first. I can't let you use it just like that before paying. All right. Well, let me get my wallet first. Why, well, there's no need. I'll pay. Huh? I'd feel bad if you did it. There are my items, too. You don't have to pay for it. Yeah, okay. Is he mad? I feel bad for letting him pay for my items, but he's so persistent. Mark paid for this infectant, and Anders gave him the change and a pack of adhesive bandages. Well, I was going to apply that to his wound, and I realised we hadn't disinfected it yet. Well, now we've got to do it. Hold the bottle. I'm going to get the cotton buds. He handed you the disinfectant. He held it while Mark got the cotton buds. While he was done, he asked you to give him back the disinfectant. He applied a disinfectant coated cotton buds on your wound. You winched at the pain, but it didn't last long. Oh, sorry. Did it hurt? I said a little bit. Don't worry about it. He continued cleaning your wound with it. After he finished, he put the adhesive bandage on your wound. Done. Now looking nice. It feels weird on. There'll be a pain to remove it later. I oh, don't say that. Well, it's true. If you're not careful, you could end up missing a patch of your fur. Yeah. Well, don't scare him like that. It's not true. These bandages are suited for us. Tch, you're no fun. Oh, thank goodness. Make sure you change it each day to keep the wound clean. Reapply the disinfectant when necessary. A small wound like that shouldn't take too long to heal. You know about this a lot. Well, let's say I have experiences with that. Hmm. You spent time with them until the rain stopped. Before you left Publix, Mark handed you the disinfectant cotton buds and bandages. You said goodbye to Mark and parted ways. And it stayed in Publix, his shift hadn't ended yet. The sky turned purple as you reached a road where you usually see Lars. You looked at the sky. The stars are slowly revealing themselves. Then you looked at the building, standing there for a bit. Is he still there, I wonder? You looked around. There was nothing left there. Hmm, why am I disappointed? It's only been four days I knew him, but seeing that place empty just feels weird. I wonder where he went to. I hope he's okay. Oh, it's too bad I didn't ask for his contact information, too. Hmm. Does he have a phone, even? Oh, I suppose not. Oh, well, let's just go home. He decided to go home. 
You reach the front gate of your apartment. You open the gate and started heading to your room. When you reached the front door, Lars stood there alone in the front porch. He was just standing there looking at the door. He realised that he was drenched, probably from the rain. He also noticed that he put his items in front of the door, protected from the rain. Did he really stand there for hours? Why didn't he stay near his bag? He noticed you standing behind him. Bruno! He raced towards you and hugged you out of a sudden. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt you. Hey Lars, what are you doing? Oh, I was wrong. I hurt you. Please don't be mad at me. Calm down. I'm not mad at you. I said in the heat of the moment. I didn't mean it either. He pulled you off from his embrace and grabbed you by the shoulder. Oh, you mean it? Hmm, look, I even got my wound treated for free. He hugged you again. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, I'm glad. Why are you drenched? Oh. oh. I knocked on the door and you didn't respond. So I thought you were mad at me. I didn't know you were outside too. Well, I was so mad at myself. I just stood there and decided that's my punishment. It's... Oh, it's nothing. Don't worry about me. His speech was getting slow and he fell down on you suddenly. Lars? You touch his forehead. He's burning up. His temperature is rising. How am I going to bring him inside? I can't just let him pass out like this. Oh, I'll make do. Let's just hope I don't strain my back. You tried to carry him, carry him inside, but he's too heavy for you. Yeah, that didn't work. Oh, I'm sorry, Lars, but I had to do this. You decided to drag him to your apartment instead. Ah, finally, everything's inside. This guy weighs a lot. It makes me wonder how heavy Anders and Mr Parker are. I can worry about that later. I need to do something about his temperature. And my dirty floor. You head to the bathroom to check the medicine cabinet. Uh, acetaminophen should be fine. You grab the meds and put your disinfectant, cotton buds and bandages inside, then headed back to the living room. When you reached the living room, Lars had woken up. He was sitting on the floor, probably confused. Hey, you're awake. How are you feeling? Oh, my head hurts. Mm, take this. You gave him the acetaminophen and a glass of water. He looked at it before he got the one down. Oh, thanks. Oh, I'll go soon once I'm feeling better. I'll take your time. Can you move? Oh, yeah, why is it? Do you want to sit on the couch? It's better to sit there. You should change your clothes first, though. Take a quick warm shower, too, if possible. Oh, all right, sorry. Give me some time to get changed. OK, you know where the bathroom is, right? Oh, yeah. He grabbed his bag and headed to the bathroom. I should wipe the floor while he's in the bathroom. I don't want the wood soaking the water. I might as well clean the dirt while I'm at it. You grab the cloth to wipe the floor. While you when you're done, you proceeded on cleaning the dirt off the floor. Finished cleaning, you sat on the couch, turning on the TV. Soon after, Lars approached you and stood next to the couch. Oh, do you mind if I sit here? I could go ahead, there's room for another. I didn't know he had another set of shirts. That looks good on him, not going to lie. He walked past you and he smelled nice too. Once he sat down, you looked at him. He was looking far more refreshed than before. You just realised his fur was really soft looking. You attempted to touch it but decided not to. Oh, thanks. I don't mention it. He didn't say anything after that. He focused his attention on the TV instead. Well, I told me the owner of the house came back. They wanted me to leave as soon as possible. Huh? Oh, well, that sucks, Lars. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, it's okay. It's not your fault. Okay. I'm going to ask this again, but please don't be angry. Where are you going to go next, then? I don't know. I'll probably leave this town. Oh. He's leaving? But that's too soon. If you're leaving, can I contact you? Well, I don't have a phone or whatnot, so I'm not sure. I see. Then why not stay here? Well, I wish, but... It... Wait, what do you mean? Stay here in this apartment. I don't mind if you stay in here. Well, that's... Come again? I don't want you to go if I can help it. This place is too big for myself anyway. If you want to, I'll call the landlord and tell him. Pretty sure he won't mind as long as we're paying. Oh, let me think about it. I don't take too long. Okay, okay. Oh, what's the catch? There's no catch. I just want to help you. I oh, can't do that. If you insist, you can do chores and stuff. Pretty sure I can handle it myself, but I wouldn't mind another help in hand. Well, I suppose I can do that. Well, I'll stay here for a while if you don't mind. 
Oh, not at all. Welcome to the household. I'm looking forward to spending more time with you. So, oh, thanks. Oh, there's one problem, though. Oh, what is it? I only have one bed, and it's not big enough to fit two people. I mean, it fits, but not big enough to move around comfortably. Ah, oh, that's fine. I can sleep on the couch. Hmm, if you're okay with it. Oh, yes. I'm really glad you want to take me in. Oh, sleeping on the couch is way better than sleeping inside the tent. Great, I'm going to call the landlord. Be right back. Okay. You grabbed your phone and called the landlord. The call went to voicemail. You called him again. He picked up the phone and told him that a friend of yours is staying here for a while and wondered if he's okay with that. He agreed to let Lars stay with you as long as he followed the rules, which is not that strict. You thanked him and hung up the phone. He said you can stay here as long as you follow the rules. And the rules are? Well, you know, stuff like that. Wash the dishes, take out the trash and all. Nothing too important, really. Long story short, just take care of this place and you're good. Ah, I can do that, yeah. Cool. Since you're staying here, why don't you put all your stuff to my room? We'll have dinner. We're uh, going to order something here since I don't want to go outside right now. It's cold. All right. He grabbed his bag containing his clothes and headed to your room. I don't forget to take out your dirty clothes and put them in the washer. Will do. While Lars was in your room, you ordered something to eat. Uh, Lars, is fried chicken okay? Oh uh, yeah, that's fine. Cool, fried chicken it is. You ordered fried chicken. A lot of fried chicken. Now I'm just going to wait for the delivery guy. I'm going to put these boxes away meanwhile. You got up ready to move the boxes, but Lars approached you and stopped you from doing so. Well, I'll take care of them. Just tell me where I should put these boxes. Your arm is hurt. You shouldn't do anything to strain your arm. It's no big deal. I can take care of it. Well, just let me repay you this way, yeah? Fine. Just put them to my room. I'll see if there's anything I need inside these boxes later. All right. Thanks a lot. Well, don't mention it. But even I can put these boxes away with ease. Oh, well. You sat on the couch and watched the TV until your food arrived. Delivery from Publix. Oh, it's our food. You got up and opened the door. He handed you the food and you gave him some tips. He thanked and excused himself, then he closed the door. Oh, I'll just head to the kitchen after you're done moving them. Okay. With the food in your possession, you headed to the kitchen and put them on the dining room table. Well, it was the first time I've seen eating. Oh, no, he ate with me yesterday, yeah. I'm glad this room has two dining chairs. It'd be weird if one of us had to eat somewhere else. Lars headed to the kitchen after he finished moving these boxes to your room. Oh, we're having fried chicken again? Yeah, I thought you liked it. Well, I like it, but you don't have to get it tonight. <laughs> I ordered fried chicken because I wanted it. Okay. Well, what are you waiting for? Wash your hands and let's dig in. Oh, yeah. Lars grabbed one chicken drum drumstick and started eating it. Heh, <laughs> the way he eats is kind of cute. Well, it seems like he's feeling better. I don't want to assume anything, so I'll just ask him. Say. Yeah? How are you feeling? Your temperature was really high earlier. Oh, that? Oh, it's gone. At least chew your food first. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Oh, it's gone. I feel perfectly fine now. That's good to know. You wait dinner with Lars. Well, thanks for the food. Hey, no problem. Just put it in the sink. I'll wash them tomorrow. Well, okay. Feel free to do anything you want. Make yourself at home. Oh, I'm going to watch TV then. Okay, I'll finish up and head to the shower. All right. You head to the living room while you're finishing up your food. Oh, looks like he's feeling better now. That's good. Well, let's put these in the sink and I'll clean them tomorrow. You go up and put these dirty plates in the sink. You wash your hands, drank water and headed to the shower. It didn't take long for you to clean up since you didn't sweat that much today. You got out of the shower, dried yourself and got changed. When you were done, you went to your room, grabbed a spare blanket for Lars and headed to the living room. Hey Lars, here's a blanket for you. You put the blanket onto the couch. Oh, thank you, that's what I need. Glad to help. Well, I'm really tired, so I'm going to hit the hay first. Don't forget to turn off the TV and the lights when you're about to sleep. I already locked the doors, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay, uh, good night, Bruno. Good night, Lars. See you tomorrow. Yeah. You headed to your room and went to sleep. Ah, uh, that's enough TV for tonight. Uh, oh, I'm tired too. Maybe should I go to sleep now? He closed his eyes, ready to go to sleep. All right, the lights. 
Lars got up and switched off the lights. Ah, uh, better. That was last day four. So the next video we'll uh, do day five here. Then once we've uh, finished last day five, we're going to do Parker's day five. And that takes us up to where we are with the public updates. Of course, if you're a patron, you know all about episode Lars. But uh, we've got two more to go, and then we'll uh, go with the updates. I've caught up to Andy at that point. So that's it. Hope you enjoy those. And uh, a couple of days, or maybe it was a couple of days ago, depending on when you're watching this. Uh, Halloween, anyway, I'm going to do something slightly different for that, which, uh, if you're around, I hope you enjoy that. But for now, I need to finish off this editing. It's a split shift, so I'm heading back to work. <laughs> oh, bye for now.